What's up, people? I'm uh, Ashley King from Crooks Tattoo Studio here in Bristol. Um, today, we're going to be talking through some uh, design process and everything like that. It's going to be um, how I set out my designs um, from pretty much from start to finish, um, how I pick my reference, um, how I piece it together, and just the process of it all. I'm going to be um, trying to instruct car apprentice here through it as well. Um, but yeah, here we go. So what I usually start off with is whichever part of the body that it's going to be on. So for example, here we're just going to say that it's on the uh, left arm. So I'm just going to draw like a real rough sketch of, we're just going to do the top of the arm for today. Arm a bit here and then like the inside of the bicep is going to come down to something like that. Kind of rough. What I then want to do is you want to think about kind of flow lines and stuff like that. So it's going to be like the tricep. You know more about muscles than I do it in a minute. Tricep. Yeah. Tricep. So that's going to kind of come, obviously, <laughs> somewhere around like this area. So obviously, really important if you're doing like anything portrait related or anything like that, that the 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 face is not going to be on this tricep muscle, especially if it's on like a more muscular guy where it's going to be like the jawline's going to be warped or something like that. So you've got to obviously take that into consideration. Um, but yeah, just get like a rough map of that. Um, I'm going to go through, like sit down with a customer for consultation and from first, so like what his like, subject matter is, what sort of design he wants, full sleeve, you know, half sleeve, anything like that. Um, I'm going to first map out where, kind of so, for example, for just for, just for now, we're just going to do like a rose and a portrait just for like placement, flow and everything like that, just like something really simple. Um, so I'm going to say like the portrait to go maybe at the top here, which I just write in portrait, just like that pretty simple and then a rose down at the bottom so I just know that's like the composition of it that's where stuff's gonna lie and then I can get my references and bring them on into that and obviously just go from there everything's it's kind of edited and like, like re-edited as I go it's not always like that's my portrait that's my rose boom boom it's done like the hardest bit of all of this as well um, which I was gonna say to you is finding the reference I can take up to an hour or up to four to five hours or even coming back to it and researching it like weekly or monthly compared with depending on where the when the appointment is keep looking at references you know going through like uh, images and especially when you go on google and stuff like that you can get up like photographers web pages where they've got more images of like the subject matter and stuff so say we're talking really about statue of david Mm. You might see like a, a different angle of it taken by someone that's only just gone over there and taken a new reference of it. It's always trying to find new refreshing images that you can use and stuff that you haven't usually used beforehand. Especially when it's when it's something like the Statue of David where it's it is a art piece, you're not going to be really changing it up. You can stylize it and everything like that, but you're not changing it up to a point where like it's your own piece because it's a piece of artwork already. So like finding a different angle of it and stuff like that. And so researching and, and going into the depths of like, not just Google images or Shutterstock, stuff like that. It's going into like artist pages of photographers or, you know, painters and stuff like that and finding different references. It's always like, obviously something to create a nice, unique tattoo for someone. Um, but yeah, so I can spend anywhere between like an hour to six hours to whatever. Sometimes, or most of the time, my reference, finding the right reference takes more time, like double or like three times the amount of time than actually doing the design. So if I know that I want my portrait here and my rose here, once I find a reference, I know it's gonna go in there and then the design doesn't actually take too long, especially if I'm placing it on the skin and then drawing onto the skin. Like that's even e easier if you've just got your two subject matters. So yeah, that's the hardest part, is just finding the right reference, the right light source and stuff like that on each piece of the reference, like we was talking about earlier. But yeah, so for example, we're just going to get this rose. Um, black and grey realism we're going to do today. So you can take the saturation out of this first. Always when you're doing a colour piece and you put it down to black and grey, usually the values are quite subtle. They're not contrasted as they would be if the photo was taken in, um, in black and grey. So I'd usually then go to image adjustments and curves. Um, just usually my rule is just to bring up those light values, bring down the darks a little bit. Now you can see all of these nice highlights all coming out in it. 
I can also, something that I usually do with this is, I'm using um, Photoshop Creative Cloud, by the way, on a Wacom um, Studio Pro 16. Um, I know a lot of people nowadays are using iPad and Procreate and stuff like that, so I don't know how that would differ, but you obviously you can search through the settings and stuff and see if there's anything different or what you can use. Um, but of here, I have a dodge tool and a burn tool. So the dodge tool, um, whichever one you select of highlights, midtones, shadows, and highlights, the dodge tool brings those pixels out. So like it's it's getting rid of, well, I can show you. If I go on the highlights and then put it here on this highlight, it's getting rid of those midtones and bringing out the highlights more. So for, if I do my, um, my highlights on, so if I do my design um, first and put these levels down, I'm not quite happy with it. I can then go in and refine and kind of, it's not artificially putting in reference uh, highlights or your reference because it's just adding or taking away to the pixels that are already there. So that can obviously really help, especially if you've got like a dot, a duller, if you really like the size of the rows or the look of the rows um, or the shape of it, but the light source isn't quite there, you can, you not artificially pull it in, you can kind of manipulate it to what you want to kind of bring it out a little bit more. Um, I then use my selection tool, which I like to work with like a clean background. So instead of taking out all of this background, I like to work with like a clean background on it. So this selection tool allows me to mask over the rows. I can cut and then paste that into there. So my rows is kind of here like this. I like to always oversize stuff. Let's always exaggerate it. Um, Cause you've got to think, especially when designing, when you've got a flat surface that you're working on here, you've got to take into consideration of the curvature of the arm. So the end of the, the tattoo here, uh, the end of the arm, sorry, is not where the tattoo is going to end. So you've got to think if this petal here, it's still actually going to bend around to the other side of the arm. So I always oversize, you know, taking that into consideration. So let's just say we we'll put that in. And then I would take, so this is the woman that we're going to be using. Again, I'm going to put in my saturation down. My curves we can put in, just bring those up slightly. Another great one for this actually is the um, camera raw filter. Um, this, you've got exposure, contrast, highlights. So no, you're not just taking down just your highlights, it's got highlights and whites, which are obviously two different. You can still bring out the contour of the cheek and stuff there. But if I bring, put the whites up, it would get rid of it. But just, sorry, putting the highlights up, it would get rid of like, it would bring all of those highlights as a blanket but the whites just brings out that extra white part in it, if that makes sense. Mm. Rather than just the highlight in general, it's like broken down into shadows and blacks as well. So it's yeah, kind of yeah. like there's four layers to it rather than just like two, if that makes sense. But for, I'm just gonna drag and drop this into my design. So these are gonna add my layer mask this allows me to get rid of the pixels, but you're actually, you're like, you're hiding them. So you can get them back again. You can get them back. So it like in the past I was doing it where I was just using the rubber to get rid of it. Mm. And then when I was like, oh, I need that a little bit bigger. I'm just like, fuck, I've deleted the pixels. You can't get them back as easy. So I always uh, use a layer mask for this part. You can do that on Procreate you, as you well. Can. You need to, Highlight your layer, right. add layer mask, and then you use the soft brush or whatever brush Wicked. you want to use. I can't recommend using that enough. Yeah. Because when you want to bring those pixels back or, you know, sometimes I've had to like refine the image and then put it back in and then, and then like go from there rather than just uh, simply bring those pixels back. So I'm just gonna make like I said, always oversizing. So if, if this is the top of the shoulder going in, I'm gonna oversize this pit. Just so like obviously the contour of the shoulder, it's gonna go over it and it overextend rather than just being like a small, you know, not working with the space yeah, efficiently. Yeah. Following the anatomy. Mm -hmm. What we 
always just like to fade these in just for like aesthetic purposes. You know, if this then goes onto the design and I've taken that away and I'm like not happy with that, I can draw it in on when it's on the skin and stuff as well. Do you know what I mean? It's not like whatever's on here is not going to be your carbon copy of what's on the skin. Mm. So like, especially when you're dealing with like skin tone and stuff like that with reference, like it's going to bring out those highlights a little bit more or you think like this needs to be bumped up. This, you know, this this part of the chin needs to be bumped up a little bit more. You want to bring out that cheekbone and put like a, a more darker tone into this into this cheek. It's not always a carbon copy. It's your representation of what this piece of artwork is onto the skin, rather than copying it. It's going to be a fast way of finding your own style and your own like unique kind of way of like adapting or, or applying the the tattoo. Um, for years, I've always you know carbon copied stuff, and it's like. Okay, it's fun and I can do that, but like, why am I doing that or what can I add to it? Mm. So it's kind of like, even though I was happy with like how it was, you know, the, the how the end product was coming out, it wasn't fulfilling to me that it was just a copy of a picture. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So now I'm actually taking time for my composition on the, on the tattoo, but uh, less time in the fine de like details of it. So I, I know that this is going to be put on the skin. I know when I, where, where that lays. I know what I'm going to do with this part. I know this is bit's going to flow off into that part. You know what I mean? It's going to be like I know where the background's going to fade out to. I know how to like contrast it to. I, I don't have to show that there's going to be a nice fade off from this because I can like morph it in together in the tattoo. It's not your carbon copy. It's your adapting and and drawing as you're going as well. Mm. Also because for. For, for like this and you know drawing uh, drawing with a pencil or painting everything for me tattooing on the skin is my favorite medium like i can sometimes if i know what i need to do i kind of don't hurry up the design but i get the design very very simple because i can't this is another medium of art my favorite medium is, is tattooing so when i apply it onto the skin i can't make them start drawing onto the skin rather than carbon copying all the details from here onto the skin but that's something that I've learned, you know, really later on and wish I'd done it a lot sooner. Do you find you should start doing that straight away as well as a beginner? I would I would say so. Like, it's not, you know, and with, with stuff like this where it's like, you know, it's kind of free and open and it's not like, um, you know, it's not like a family member's portrait or anything like that. So it's like you can kind of have fun with it. It doesn't need to be absolutely 100% what it is on, on the paper. You can adapt it and create your own style and kind of like see what happens. I've had it where like, you know, kind of like I would do like a, I'll come up too far with this, with um, get a new layer on there, so it was like a brush stroke or something. And I'm like, oh, actually that kind of flow line look works really cool. And then I'd like, or like a bit of ink splats onto the skin. And you're like, oh, actually I'm going to bring that bit down. Or like when you rub the ink away, it kind of creates that smear mark. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that flow line is going to come down really nice into there. It's like, it doesn't have to always be like I said, a carbon copy. It's, but I would recommend doing that yeah, sooner rather than later and kind of finding your feet with it. I think you'd feel a lot more comfortable obviously getting into um, your first couple of tattoos and stuff where I don't have to copy exactly what's on that piece of paper. It's kind of my representation of it on the skin. I think that'll help a lot. Well, we're at 15 minutes. Like yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of shit in that. So you can just, <laughs> you just cut anything down. <laughs> Or it, even if like you can look at it and then see what, and then I can do mm -hmm. another one and whittle it down or whatever. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, more than that ever. Um, so yeah, just kind of, I'm always like want to soften up these edges just for like aesthetic purposes. Um, I'm always going to put in a layer for my background, just so then these, the contrast of the uh, these highlights. Obviously, a darker background is always what you want to work from, especially working on a light tone of skin. So all these highlights are now popping out. Um, then kind of resorting back to the first bit, which I said about putting in like the um, tricep uh, muscle and stuff and where stuff's going to flow. You always want to work with obviously flow lines and uh, uh, flow of the body and stuff like that and the anatomy of it. So where that tricep's going to go, maybe I'm going to put in a nice like negative space that's going to kind of come up from here. And in this you can do anything with them, do you know what I mean? You can put in like some nice flow lines. That's really going to carry the piece and give it movement, especially with her looking this way. Do you know what I mean? Anything like that. It's just going to give it that kind of unique touch. To what you've done. So you've gone from really two simple images to putting these little flow lines in. It's going to really give it some 
some stylizing, some character, and something that's like unique to the customer. And then these, you can I sometimes usually put these on as my reference, like on the um, actually on the design, or sometimes I then have this really simple, and then these lines that we put in here, I then kind of draw onto the skin because when you've got the transfer on the skin, you can see the contour contour lines of the body more so, so you can kind of add that in and everything like that. But um, but yeah, kind of really simple way of just kind of how I kind of break down my design process. Like I said, finding a reference is the hardest point. Um, you can go as detailed or as non-detailed as you want. Whereas if you want to work on the skin with the design or you want to get the design absolutely perfect on here and use that as your reference. But it's up to you to kind of find your own way.